Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about ADXL International AS and A levels, statistics too. In this lecture, we'll continue with chapter 7, hypothesis testing. So in the previous lecture, we've talked about the one-tailed test, and today we're going to talk about the two-tailed tests. Okay, so here we have a random variable and it has distribution, binomial, index is 25 parameters p. So we have a single observation of x equals to 10 is taken from this distribution. Um, so we want to test at this 10% significance level. So we have h0 here is p equals to 0 0.3 and we have the alternative one is p not equal to 0 0.3. Okay, so this one is not uh, one tail, right? Because we don't know if this alternative is greater than 0 0.3 or less than 0 0.3. So for this question, the first step we are going to do is we are going to decide if we want to do x less than or equal to x, or we want to do x greater than or equal to x. So basically, we are looking at which tail we are going to test, right? So how do we decide this one? So here we have x satisfy this binomial distribution 25. And if we assume now hypothesis is true, so here we have 0 0.3. Okay, so we have an expected value of this distribution, which is 25 times 0 0.3. So it is 7.5. Okay, now let's take a look at this observation. So the observation is x equals to 10, which is greater than this expected value. So in this case, we are going to do the test x greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so this one will be 1 minus probability x less than or equal to 9. So here is the distribution when n equals to 25, and we have p equals to 0 0.3. Okay, so if it's 9, so this value will be 0 0.8106. So 1 minus 0 0.8106, right? So it will be 0 0.1094. Okay, so we have this value, um, sorry, 1, not 1, 8, 1, 8, 9, 4. Okay, so we have this one, which is greater than, because here we have 10 significance level, right? So we should divide 2, because we are doing the two-tailed test. So this one is greater than 5%, which is 0 0.05. So that means we have no sufficient evidence to reject evidence um, to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we have no reason to doubt that p can't be 0 0.3, right? Okay, so that's for question two. Now let's take a look at another one. So this is question eight. So a machine uh, which makes glass balls. So it is observed that 1 in 10 of the balls have small crack. So the production process is improved and a sample of 20 balls is taken. So one of these balls is cracked. Um, and test at the 10% level of significance the hypothesis, the proportion of cracked balls has changed. Okay, so here it has changed, so we don't know how it is changed. So we are going to do a two-tailed test, right? So if we say has improved, so we are going to test p less than 10%. Okay, so here 1 in 10 of the balls. So we have our null hypothesis p, which is uh, uh, probability of uh, like crack, of having crack is 0 0.1, right? So the alternative is p not equal to 0 0.1. Okay, and the test statistic is the number of balls which have crack. Okay, so we have x satisfy the binomial distribution 20. So if we assume the null hypothesis is true, so we have 0 0.1 here. Okay, and our observation is 
1. So we have x equals to 1. Okay, so first we calculate the expected value based on this distribution. So we have n times p, which is 20 times 0 0.1. So it's 2, greater than our observation. So in this case, we are going to test x less than or equal to this one. Okay, so this one, n equals to 20, and we have 0 0.1, less than or equal to 1. So we have this value here, uh, 0 0.3917. And because we are doing 10% level of significance, so we compare with half of it, right? So this is greater than half of 10%. So that means we have no reason to reject the null hypothesis, right? So not enough evidence to reject null hypothesis. And also, um, we can say we don't have um, any reason to doubt that this uh, crack rate will be changed. Okay, so that's for question 9. Next one. Oh, question 8. Question 9. So over a period of time, uh, Agnesa has discovered that the carrots she grows have a 25% chance of being longer than 7 centimeters. She tries a new type of fertilizer to help them grow. In a random sample of 30 carrots, 13 are longer than 7. She said this new fertilizer has changed. So here we don't know if it's make it the probability of being 7%, uh, 7 centimeter or longer is uh, increasing or decreasing, right? So we are going to do a two-tailed. So we have the null hypothesis P equals to 25%. Okay, and then we have the alternative is P not equal to 25%. And we have the test statistic is the number of carrots, right, uh, longer than 7 centimeter. Okay, so we have X satisfied binomial distribution N equals to 30. We assume now hypothesis is true, so 0 0.25. So our observation is 13. Okay, so first we have n times p equals to 30 times 0 0.25. So this will be 7.5, right? And this is less than our observation. So we are going to test x greater than or equal to our observation. So this equals to 1 minus probability x less than or equal to 12. Okay, so n equals to 30, 0 0.25. So we look at this column. So 12 is this one, right? So it's 1 minus 0 0.9784. So it equals to 0 0.0216. Okay, so here is 5% significance level. So this one is less than 0 0.025, right? Which is half of 5%. So in this case, we are going to reject the null hypothesis, right? So, um, so the probability of having carrots longer than seven centimeter has been changed. Okay, so that's how we do this question nine. So let's just do a quick review of this two-tailed test. So first, we are going to assume that this test statistic satisfies the binomial distribution and p, and p is based on the null hypothesis. And then we are calculating the expected value n times p. So if our observation is greater than n times p, then we are going to calculate the probability x greater than or equal to x0. Okay, so if this probability x greater than or equal to x0, so this one is greater than or equal to half of the significance level, right? Then we are going to accept the null hypothesis. Or we say no, um, no evidence to reject null hypothesis, right? However, if this probability x greater than or equal to 3 is uh, x0 is less than the significance level over 2, 
Then we say we have evidence to reject null hypothesis. Okay, so if our observation is less than the expected value, then we are going to calculate x less than or equal to x0. Okay, again, so if probability x less than or equal to x0 is greater than or equal to significance level over 2, then we say no evidence to reject null hypothesis. However, if this value is less than significance level over 2, then we have evidence to reject null hypothesis. So that means we have evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Okay, let's just take a look at the syllabus here. So we talk about this in chapter three, uh, chapter 6, actually. So these uh, 4.3, 4, 5 have been covered. So we are going to do 4.6 in the next lecture. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish good luck with your exam. Thank you.